Good morning. Blessings and peace to each one here this morning. It's good to be back together. It's good to be here. <coughs> Last week, we were at Kingdom Fellowship. <coughs> we enjoyed our time there. This morning, I would like to share a little bit of what I shared there, a small part of it. But I'm going in a little bit different direction this morning. I am amazed and find it very interesting watching my boys. I find it interesting <coughs> how they learn things and how they grow. This past week, my brother-in-law brought a uh, small four-wheeler down. Acklin, we taught him how to drive on the golf cart. And Caden, I was trying to, but his feet just wouldn't hit the pedals. My brother-in-law brought a real small four-wheeler down. And he's been here for the last two weeks and working on a property that he has. And this four-wheeler is just right for Caden. And Caden learned to drive on this four-wheeler. And to him... That was a big stepping stone because now he can learn to drive. Now he knows how to drive. As I sit back and hold my youngest son and watch him grow over the past four months, the question comes to me, do I desire to grow? Or do I want to just stay where I'm at? You know, it's pretty comfortable where we're at. I don't have to learn new things. I don't have to run into difficulties. Growing, there's challenges to growth. Many people desire to grow. My boys, I see that. They desire to get to the next phase of their life. They desire to, to be able to drive a car, to be able to drive the tractor. Omer, or at least Elsie, seen it out there, my Boys were driving the excavator this week out there on the job. They desire to grow. Do we desire to grow? Many people desire to have friends. They desire to grow their friendship list on Facebook. They desire to grow in popularity. They desire to grow in attention. Give me more attention. They desire to grow their assets. They desire to grow their cash flow. I want to get paid more. They desire to grow their business. But do we desire to grow personally? And do we desire to grow together? Or not? I believe the number one enemy to growth is busyness. To growing spiritually and growing together is busyness. Matthew 6, 21 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I also believe that if I am to grow 
outwardly, if I am to grow in some of these other things, friendships, popularity, assets, business, all this other stuff, we must first grow inwardly. Picture with me a business that is doing business together, and I'm going to use our shop up there where Cody and I are currently working at. Let's say we want to expand our customer reach, right? I, first of all, we together, first of all, need to grow within the company. We need to get the manpower to service the customers. We need to get the buildings that we need to store the assets. There, first of all, needs to be inward growth before there can be outward growth. The same is true in our personal life. If God is going to bless me with more friends, am I going to be able to grow personally and maintain the friends I have? Or am I going to have to drop those friends to get new ones? If we at, at Cornerstone want to grow as a church, then I believe we first of all need to grow together as a body. Growth starts within before it can grow without. Many times people desire growth. I want growth. But the structure that we're in cannot contain the capacity of our growth. Or we as a person, me as a person, am not ready for growth. So God wants me to grow within me before I'm ready for outward growth. Ephesians 4, 1, and I'm going to read most of this chapter. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 1 through 24. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Notice the measure there. We are given grace with what we need. We're not with what we can contain. That's different for each one of us. Wherefore, verse 8, he saith, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he descended in this is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure, again, the measure of children, the measure of the fullness of Christ. Here again, that, that measure is going to be different for each one of us here. It depends on as we grow. That we might henceforth no more be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working 
in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I, there, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth not walk, walk not as other Gentiles walked, in the vanity of the mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, through the blindness of their hearts, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught of him, as the truth is in Jesus, ye put off concerning the former conversations the old man, which is corruptible according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. Some of the, the things that I want to point out here in the middle of this chapter is verse 11. And he gave some apostles, prophets, some evangelists. You know, every one of us are probably going to be different, right? We're all going to see things differently. And God gave some of us the ability to, to um, do different things. The question that we often steer away from is do I need my brother? Do, can I grow from my brother? And many times, we don't like to grow because that is painful, and we're going to get into that in, in later on. But we don't want to grow, even though God has brought us together to, so that we can all grow together, so that I can be a better me, so that you can be a better you. And sometimes some of these things are painful. Sometimes some of these things are discouraging. But it is in verse 10, it's God has brought us together till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. You know, in my knowledge of God, I can see a portion of God. As I look at Junior here, Junior's been here a lot longer. Junior probably sees a little different portion than what I do. Omer sees a little bit different. But as we come together, as we grow together, Junior helps me see his perspective. Omer helps me see his perspective. And all of a sudden, I can see a bigger perspective because I'm growing together. I'm no longer just my own perspective, but rather... I have a bigger perspective of God. And that is growth. That is what we need to be focused on as a church. And in verse 12, it says, What? For the perfecting of the saints. God wants, God wants to perfect me. <clears throat> Excuse me. God wants to perfect me. Most of you here know that there's some, okay, Daryl does got some problems, right? You all know that. Tony, quit laughing. We all know that, that Daryl is not the perfect man, right? But of course, I'll gladly admit it. And I'm great with you admitting it too. Go ahead. But God wants to perfect me, and he wants to use you to perfect me. He wants me to help perfect you. He wants us to perfect each other. But he also, and he wants us to do this for his work, for his ministry. But he also want us, wants us to try to edify, or to, <clears throat> he wants us to do it for the edifying of the body of Christ. To further the, the body of Christ. To further his church, his bride. It's not for me and my glory. It's not for you and your glory. But it's for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. <clears throat> One thing I want to inject here, and I'm not going to harp on this long. But as we look at growing together, I want us to remember one thing. If you forget everything else, remember this. If it's not done in love, then it's not from above. End of discussion. Okay? So as we look at growing together, let's keep in mind that love is the foundation of all of this. <clears throat> 
No growth creates burnouts in relationships. What do you mean by that? Let me, let me just, just, just give you an example. <clears throat> Suppose I want to um, have a relationship with Orlando. I'm going to pick on you. You're in the front here. Suppose I want to have a relationship with Orlando. But Orlando don't want that relationship with me. So as I pursue that relationship, if that relationship does not, is not pursued back, it's going to create burnout in my life. And after a while, I'm going to be like, okay, that's fine. And the relationship is going to distance. No growth creates burnout. <clears throat> we all, I want everybody here to grow to understand Daryl. I mean, yeah. I want everybody to understand my view, my perspective. Right? We all do. But what about, can I understand your perspective? You understand what I'm saying when I say growth, no growth creates burnouts? If it's not a two-way street here, it's going to burn out. It will. There must be growth on both sides. <clears throat> we grow much more together than we ever could by ourselves. You ever think about that? The amount that people grow, and what happens when I shut that door to growth in my life? You know what? I don't want to hear what you have to say. All of a sudden, my growth, it doesn't just stop. It actually goes backwards. I'm going to make a statement. You have to have growth to maintain your current status in life. Think about that. You have to have growth to maintain where you are at spiritually today. It's just like a river. If you're not paddling up a river, the wiles of sin are going to drag you back if there's no growth. There must be growth to maintain our current relationship with Christ, our current relationship with each other. I believe that. I firmly believe that. <clears throat> the Christian life was never meant to be lived alone. It never was. What did God say when he created Adam? Oh, it ain't good that man will be alone. And you know what? I'm going to say this as well. It ain't good that it's just husband and wife living together without relationships. You realize how discouraging and how much of a tunnel vision you get when it's just my perspective, me and my wife? You get an unbalanced um perspective <clears throat> and you know ever since Adam and Eve fell <clears throat> ever since that fall I I see it so much and and it, it it's starting to bother me now it's starting to bother me in my own in my own life <clears throat> you know we really don't need each other you ever think about that we could get along in life just fine in my little corner of the woods. I mean, after all, I have a smartphone for when I get bored. A smartphone making a dumb person. Sorry to be so blunt, but that's exactly the way it is. I have social media for my friendships. I can go on social media and I can... See what this person posts or that person posts. I have insurance for my time of need. I don't need the church. I don't need you guys. I have insurance. I don't need the church for security like it once was. I have possessions. I got a fence around my property. I don't need you guys to, for security. You see what's happening? 
I personally believe that Satan has brought all these things to take the need of relationship and the need of growth away from God's people. I got a question here. How many of us have insurance? Raise your hand. Most of us. Insurance on our properties. Most of us. We all have insurance. What about on your cars? Oh, if you don't get to have insurance on your cars, you're going to get a ticket. Omer's gotten several calls from officers because they were following me and they run my plates and it didn't say that there was insurance on them. And for some reason, there was a little glitch in the system. Omer's gotten several calls. Just, just two weeks ago, I got stopped again. Officer come up. Where's your insurance? I gave him my insurance. Well, it ain't showing that you have it. I said, well, there's the proof. He was like, well, it ain't showing you have it. I said, well, I said, you're holding the proof. I'm sorry. I said, I don't know what's wrong. Well, you better talk to your insurance about it. And I totally forgot about that. That was with the white 1500. But we don't really need each other. And we definitely don't need each other to grow. Because why would I want to grow? I'm happy where I'm at. <clears throat> I see a lot of people, they want individualism. And... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say this. Some of you may not agree with me. But, you know, years ago, we needed a bigger group than just our little group. So churches banded together, and they formed a network of groups, right? We have the Beachy. We have the Bethel. We have Midwest. We have... Charity, we have all these groups, right? But, oh, we don't need them anymore. We have insurance. We have everything else. So we don't need these other people. We don't need to be a part of a fellowship anymore. You see what's happening? Satan is bringing individualism into our midst to disrupt the need of each other and the need of growth. I, I personally believe that Satan is doing a really good job of it. Growing together does not, is not only a Christian thing. It is not only a beachy thing, a Mennonite thing, whatever you want to call it. It is not. Remember what I said earlier? We can, we can accomplish so much more together than we can alone. How many of you, how many won the, the Super, how many of you know who won the Super Bowl last year, 2023? Who won it? Who won it? Chief. Kansas City Chiefs, right? How did they win that, that Super Bowl? Let's go ahead and get the next slide up here, Tony. How did they win the Super Bowl? Was it one guy that won it? No, it was a team effort. And the team effort was able to do so much more than one individual could. Now, how did they win that? How did they win that? <clears throat> they won it by every single player striving to do the best and learn as much as he could. You know, those guys starting out, they were probably, they were maybe a little more athlete than what I am. I mean, I spent several years in my office chair in Missouri. But they were probably a little more athletic than what I am. But they still started out way down the road they started out as infants and you know you are going to find that in cornerstone here every one of us are at a different place in life every one of us but together we can exercise our faith we can exercise our knowledge of christ and we can grow together and you know what we can be a team that wins the super bowl for christ we can be winners. We can, we can win. 
But we have to be willing to allow that criticism to come into my life and for me to look at that honestly and squarely and say, yes, yes, I need to grow here. An incident happened this week at, at the job, and I use, I'm gonna, I asked Tony, and he said, yes, I can use, use this as an illustration. Friday morning, we were going to, um, Cody rolled the, or made the trim for Omer's house, or Carissa's house, and I rolled the panels out for the garage roof. And Friday morning, I, we're gonna, I'm going to get that roof on, and I wanted to get the, the dormers, the, the rafters on the dormers. And I, I come to that job. And I wasn't, I knew I had to leave at 1230. I knew that. Because we had a building to go move in the afternoon. And I knew I had to leave. And let me tell you one thing. I come on that job, and I wasn't sticking in first gear. I was wide open. And I wasn't communicating, and I don't, Raymond, he didn't say nothing to me for some reason. I don't know why he didn't, but <laughs> but I, I hit that job wide open. And I was um giving orders and telling them what we're or I wasn't telling them what we were gonna do. I was just giving orders. And I was expecting people to jump to my bark, right? And finally Tony had enough of this. And he was like, what is wrong with you? And I looked right back at him, and I was like, what is wrong with you? He was withdrawing, and I looked right at him, and I said, what is wrong with you? And he looked at me, and he was like, you come on the job, barking orders, and you never told us what we're doing. And it hit me. Ouch. Ouch. You know, sometimes we are that way. I didn't see that. I had a goal, and I was going to get that goal done. We did get it done. What, we got it done 10 minutes early, right? We got done what we wanted to accomplish. I didn't quite think we would, honestly. After Tony made that comment, I was like, oh boy, this day's going to go down the tube fast. But it, it hit me. It hit me. Here I am. Do I allow somebody else to cause me, to allow me to grow? I stopped everything right there. I was like, all right. All right, I'm sorry. I stopped everything. And I was like, this is what I want to get done. We're going to do this first. We're going to do the roof. We're going to get this covered in. Then we're going to work on the back dormer, then the front dormer. If we get it all done, great. If not, no big deal. We got it all done. Why? Why did we get it done? It was because somebody was willing to stand up and say, Daryl, there's a problem. You have a problem. And many times we look at life, we go through life, and I'm like, what is your problem, dude? Or Tony could have just shut up and been frustrated all day. But instead, we had a good day working together. You know, there are times, and I, I'm just going to be right out front and honest with you, this thing of, oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad? Yeah, right, my bad. Say I'm sorry, dude. It is, yes, it is your bad, but apologize. It's not just, oh, I shouldn't have done that. No, let's say I'm sorry. My bad is not an apology. It's just saying that, yes, you were bad, which we all knew that. All you're doing is admitting what everybody knew. But an apology goes so much farther. I'm sorry. Let's say that together. I'm sorry. See, it wasn't that hard. Now, what's next? Can you forgive me? Let's try that one. Can you forgive me? 
See, that ain't even hard. But yet my pride swells up. And oh, I can't say I'm sorry. Because after all, you were withdrawing too. Well, there's a reason. There's a reason that Tony was getting frustrated with me. One of the things that I see so much in, in growth, in, in interpersonal relationship, and I, ha- I have been told this, that, you know, people, people quote 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Really? Really? That is such a twist of that scripture. Yes, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sh- jump out all on them here, and I'm probably going to get kicked for this. But I am not okay with where Cornerstone's at. I'm not okay with it. As a leader here at Cornerstone, I'm sorry. I am not okay with where Cornerstone is at today. But yet, I am perfectly okay with where each one of you are at today. You see, as a leader here in Cornerstone, I am okay with where individuals are at. I am content that you are where you're at. But it is my desire for myself and for each one of us here that we do not stay where we're at, but that we grow. Not just in number, but grow together. If we are going to sit here and just be content with where we're at, it is just like that relationship that is one-sided. Those that desire growth are going to leave. They will. If we can't grow together, there's going to be a going away. How do we grow together? Hebrews 12, 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I believe that one, that in order to grow together, we have to be together, right? It doesn't work to not be together and not grow together. My wife and I, we we love having people at our place, and we love getting together with people. But I believe that is so vitally important for church growth, for friendships, is being together. Together. <clears throat> That's the first point. How do we grow together? We grow together by being together. We all start out. As infants, like I said, we're all at different places. And God wants to take us to different levels. There will be a difference in each one of us. Every single one of us. There will be a difference. I just want to emphasize that. However, without a relationship, there can be no discipleship. You understand that? We cannot... If Orlando does not have a relationship with me, how in the world is he ever going to feel free to come and tell me, Daryl, you know what? You come in here like a freight train on this job. There has to be a relationship before we can disciple each other. (coughs) We go, we grow together. By speaking the hard truth. What do you mean by that? 
Ephesians 4.15 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things that is the head even of Christ. Proverbs 27.17 says, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. You know, <clears throat> I'm going I'm to tell you that I know it wasn't the easiest thing for Tony to come out and tell me, Daryl, you're in here being a jerk. He didn't say that in that word, but in, in, in his words, it, that's what he said. In, in, in my words. It is hard. It is hard for me to come up and tell someone, you know what, this is a problem. We all know, every one of us here, we have an idea what the other person wants to hear, right? We all do. We have an idea what each other wants to hear. And many times we tell people what they want to hear rather than telling them actually what they need to hear. And it is not true love. True love speaks the hard truth, even though it's hard. But I'm going to say this, in love. Remember, if it's not done in love, it's not from above. Speaking, growing together, we have to speak the hard truth. Sometimes we don't see areas that we need to grow. Am I open to accepting others' inputs, or do I accuse them of, oh, you're just being critical? That's all you're doing. You're just critical of me. First of all, I want to say, what a spoiled brat. If that's my attitude. Sometimes, sometimes when we, when we confront each other, it comes out a little bit country, right? It just does. We don't, we don't exactly, we don't exactly think of the exact precise words that, that we may need. And it's humanity. After all, I have faults too. I have them. But can I take what come out a little bit sideways or come out a little bit country and accept that and still grow from it? And one thing that I'm gonna that I'm gonna just gonna inject here. It may not all be 100% true. In fact, there's a good possibility that at least 50% of it should have been left in the dump and the other 50% has some weight. But can I still accept that criticism, that growth, and grow from it? We grow by reading together. Titus 4.13 says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And earlier on, exhortation would have come in that um, with speaking the hard truth. Do we, we grow by reading the scriptures together. Do we do that as a church? We do it Sunday mornings. I know some churches that they just have a time of Bible reading on some Wednesday nights. Um, in Wisconsin, where I grew up, there was one Wednesday night a week that there was nothing planned. You just got together and read Scripture. I don't know. That's an idea. 
We, get, we grow by challenging each other. 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is given for, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for righteous, in righteousness. We grow together by challenging each other. Daryl, is this really what you wanted to say? This is what I understood. Did I understand you right? We grow together by challenging each other. And lastly, we grow together by preaching, through the preaching of God's word. 2 Timothy 4, 2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, rebuke, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. You know, I just want to say that I, as a person, I had said earlier that I am not okay with where I am at. But yet I am content with where God has brought me. But friends, I want to grow. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you something that I, I just told my leadership team. I don't know, was it last, last meeting or something? I just made the comment. I said, I as a as a person would like to go do or go somewhere to learn to be a better pastor here for the church. If not for the church, for my own personal benefit. I don't know if it'll trickle down. But this thing of, of uh, being a preacher here at Cornerstone has never once crossed my mind growing up. And so there was no preparation in it whatsoever in my life none at all and some of you know and some of you know that I mean you can admit it right shake your heads yes we, you, you know that I don't make a very good a very good um, preacher here but I desire to grow I desire growth not only in myself but in my relationship with my wife in my in my family and in the church here growing is painful as i mentioned before it hurts to grow <clears throat> and especially it, it, there's there's feelings that can hurt when when we help each other grow but i want to ask you a question this morning look at the person in front of you or behind you and ask yourself or no, actually, take that back. Think of the person that bugs you the most here at Cornerstone. Okay, do you got a name in your head? Yes, you, we all do, right? Come on, we can admit it. We, there is one person here that bugs us more than any. And you know what? To some of you, it's me. That's okay. And to some of, and to me, it, it may be one of you. Now, think of this. Do you believe that God in heaven looking down specifically says, Daryl, you need to grow in this area. I am going to pick this person and bring you together to help you grow. Do you believe that God tailor picked every person here at Cornerstone for you to grow? I believe he did. For me, anyhow, I believe he did. And so many times is what happens is Tony coming to me just ticked me off. And so I'm going to leave that church, and I'm going to run just like Jonah did. And guess what? I run into a bigger mess than from where God had me be. Do you understand that this is not just something that we are growing together, but it is something that God is overseeing your growth and my growth. I firmly believe that every one of you here, God brought here, God tailor picked you to be here to help me grow. I want to ask you a question. 
if God tailor picked you to help me grow, are you willing to? Are you willing to speak the hard truths in my life? Now, it's not something that we keep nagging on and, and harping on and time and time again. No. But do I desire growth in my life, in my family? And I see the clock is flying. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 16 says, For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. It maketh increase of the body the edify, unto the edifying of itself in love. <clears throat> you know, I believe that many Many times in interpersonal growth within the church, we see a problem, we see an issue. And can I say it has a band-aid on it? And what, what happens when you slowly pull a band-aid off? It hurts, right? The other day, one of my boys, he had a cut, actually it was several weeks ago, he had a cut and or a scratch or something. And he was trying to get the band-aid off because it was healed. He was done with it. And it hurt to pull that band-aid off. And so I was like, I, was, I come to him and I was like, hey, son. I said, um, should dad help you? Yeah, but it hurts. I said, okay. I said, that, that's fine. So I carefully took him on my, on my knee and I was like, hey, look over there. And when he looked, I ripped that band-aid off. And he was like, ouch, oh, that didn't hurt at all. Sometimes we suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer simply because we don't rip that band-aid off. You know, things heal when they're exposed to truth and light. That is where healing comes from. And it does no good to tiptoe around people's feelings. It does no good. Let's just take that bandage, lovingly rip it off. Get it out in the open. And that is where things can heal. I got a question. Are you willing to do that for me? Are you? I want you to. <clears throat> now, I'm I'm going to I'm going to just say this very emphatically. I when we talk about growth, we talk about healing. I am not talking about personal preferences. Okay? If it's a personal preference, then keep it a personal preference. Don't try to make it a public preference. We are not talking about personal preferences here. We are talking about biblical growth, spiritual growth. <clears throat> when things get hard, do I ask God, God, what are you trying to teach me? What do you want me to learn from this? There is no excuse for not growing. Where you are today is not where you need to end up. Where I'm at today is not where God wants me to end up. He wants me to grow more like Him. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7, 6 through 10 says... Paul says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is it he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but it's God that gave the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are laborers together with God. Notice that we are laborers together with God. In other words, you are supposed to be a laborer with God to help me grow. 
You are. You're a laborer with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. You know, many times we, we don't want to share our experiences. We don't want to. Because we feel that people will be critical of our experiences, right? And some people are. But let me tell you, that's an area they need to grow in. That's an area they need to grow in. Do we share our experiences with people, with each other? Do we encourage each other to be faithful, to maintain? You know, many times people want us to weep with them when they weep. But let me tell you, when we want people to rejoice with us, oh, you're just proud. Get that out of your head. The Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. Weep with them that weep. Can I rejoice when I see another person growing? And I'm going to tell you right now that this does not only extend in the church as I mentioned. We, we talked about the, the, the football team, the Giants. I was kind of happy about that last year, I mean, because that's where I was from, Missouri, right? So I was kind of, yeah. <clears throat> Second Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and ev- both now and today and to the day of eternity. Amen. That's a different transa- tra- translation. You know, a person, a person that per- pursues relationships and growth is going to live a life filled with joy. They're going to live a life that is successful. Because I want to tell you something. There isn't a thing in this world that is not based on relationships. Did you know that? Other than self. Other than self. Work. Community. Job. Everything is based on relationships. Do we build them relationships? Being confident of this one thing. Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in in you will perform it until the day of Jesus. Go ahead and get the last slide up here, Tony. God wants to continue to grow us. And he, just because we don't want to grow, does not mean that God is going to let off of us. He's going to bring somebody else into our life because God's goal is to is to perfect us. And he is going to pursue that perfection until. Until the day of Jesus Christ, until God comes back, he's going to continue to pursue perfection in my life. As I mentioned before, we're all on different stages. Go ahead and get the last one up, Tony. We're all on different stages in our growth life. Are you okay with that? We should be. We should be okay with this being Junior, this being Omer, this being Freeman. And you know what? Daryl's right here or even back here. Are we okay with where we're at? But yet, do we desire this person to be, to actually be bringing forth fruit. Do we desire growth? That is my goal for Cornerstone, is that we grow together. That we not stay where we're at, but that 
you as a church can help me grow, that we can grow together for the furtherance of God's kingdom. Let's bow our heads for prayer. <clears throat> Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one that gives the growth, that you are the one that desires us to grow. Father, help us to not be, be lack in growing. Father, help us to, to strive for growth within our own personal life, within, our, within us as a body, within our brother. And Father, help us, Lord, to be willing to accept, to be willing to exceed, to receive the, the critiquing that you have from that you have for me through our through the church here, Lord. God, I just pray that we would grow and to be a beautiful vessel for you. Father, help us, Lord, as we go from here. Help us to, to strive to grow in our relationship with you and, and with one another, Lord. Father, I just pray that you would bless each one here. Father, we commit this service. We commit your word to you in Jesus' name. Amen.